recording in progress. Okay. So in this class, we will continue uh, the tip calculator app design. So first, uh, first phase, we have gone through the tip calculator day one, uh, and we uh, did the uh, uh, you know preparation of the XML file that is required for the app development. So uh, we we have I think covered all the tasks in the XML file uh, file creation. So we have done up to the last uh, section and then we have uh, stopped at the point where we have um, we have where we have uh, completed all the elements in the in the uh, design right in the interface design so in the in today's class we will be going through the day 3 tasks that are available in the lms so if you um, if you can i want you to go to the lms and go to the link uh, to this file tip calculator notes day 3 and then uh, try to see whether you, you you can follow the steps that i have given there so let's go step by step and then we will complete the logic uh, of the app so we we are going to uh, build the logic behind the app in this uh, in this uh, in this section so uh, i want you to go through the steps and uh, try to uh, you know understand the steps so if you don't understand then please let me know i will give you maybe 5 minutes to access the document and then uh, start uh, working on it so uh, the first one that you need to do uh, once you have developed the code in the XML is that uh, you need to uh, make sure that you have all the, uh, you know, like uh, the UI design done. So you need to make sure that you, you uh, your user interface is op appearing properly once you run the code So your XML file should contain the elements 
um, all the elements that are required. So uh, you have to have the text file, edit text element, text view. Uh, after that, uh, you have to have three radio buttons, then a switch and a button. Uh, apart from that, there's another text view at the end. So this is how the interface will look like. The, de uh, the text view at the beginning, uh, it had the edit text, uh, uh, edit text view. It is the edit text view. Uh, because uh, it is a uh, text view into which we can input the uh, input the text so it is also known as plain text in the uh, in the i mean in the design files it is also called as plain text uh, however when we are defining it in the xml file we can put that as edit text uh, so afterwards text view then we have three radio buttons and then we again put a text view and then we put a button file here at the end we have a text view so what should happen in this app is that once you click the tag sorry once you put some value in here that value should be able to uh, should be i mean we should be able to calculate the tip value based on the input data so in here uh, we can put some value basically some kind of a decimal value we can put uh, which which uh, which is the value that we get as the bill amount total bill and based on the percentage that you want to calculate the tip on um, you can select the tip value in there so once you click the calculate button you should be able to get some tip value in here. So that is what we are trying to do in this uh, session. So once you click the button, you need to get some output. So we need to build the, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, logic in here such that once you click the button, some output appears in here. So first and foremost, uh, when you look at the tasks first and foremost you need to enable something called view binding so view binding is uh, something that is used in android to bind all the views into one object so in the uh, in the uh, gradle file you need to in the gradle file in the android studio you need to enable view binding right so view binding is a, a step that you need to do uh, in order to create a file called binding, right? A kind of an object called binding. In, uh, so this object has different, uh, I mean, it has the information of all the views that we have defined in the uh, design, right? We have defined different types of views, edit text view, text view, uh, radio buttons, uh, buttons, those things. So all those views and their details can be stored in one file that can be known as binding uh, file or binding object. So in the binding object, all those can be stored. So when we are having a lot of views, when we have uh, many views that are defined in our design, then we uh, try to use the binding file to access the views right so in here we have multiple text i mean text view uh, edit text view radio buttons again text view buttons text views so there are about one two three four five six seven eight views when we take singular views that are there there are about seven views uh, when we are designing some more complex applications we might need to we might have some applications where we have a lot of views in the interface if we have a lot of views then we can uh, use binding file uh, to access those views very easily 
So in order to enable the binding, we will go to the uh, Gradle file and we will enable the binding. So the Gradle files are available in this left side directory under Gradle scripts. Go, can go to build Gradle file. In there, uh, you have this Gradle file. Uh, under Android section, you can add the sec uh, add the enabling uh, code for uh, view binding. So you need to add this in under the Android section, right? Not under any sections, but specifically under Android section, you can add it somewhere in a, a intermediate location, in a location that you prefer. After that, you need to sync it. You need to sync it. You have to click sync now. Then by doing that, that uh, view binding will be enabled in all the files in the app. So uh, now we can access view binding file in this Kotlin, uh, Kotlin code. So in order to access that, we need to uh, we need to uh, c call the view binding uh, as a as a variable in the uh, in the Kotlin file, right? So I will uh, uh, so. It, in order to access the view binding, we will uh, enable that through this code. So you can remove the section from class main activity. So uh, this part you can remove. And instead, you can put the one that I have copy pasted to here. So, uh, so rather than using resource file, now we are going to use the binding file to access the views. So we are going to remove this. So after doing that, we can see that in here, uh, in the uh, class main activity file uh, in the class main activity uh, we have defined uh, initially some variable called binding and that we have made equal to the uh, activity main binding variable so uh, what we, I mean, activity main binding type of variable, right? The type of variable is activity main binding. So that is a type of variable in Android. And the uh, binding name is, uh, variable name is binding. And then we uh, also uh, define that variable as a late init variable. Late init variable is uh, a variable that we initialize before using the variable somewhere in the code right so uh, binding is a variable that we define as a late init variable right so the type of this variable is a late init variable that means that we are initializing it at a later stage right we are not initializing in this place itself but somewhere in the intermediate uh, code we will call this variable so what is the reason for calling this variable a late init variable what is the reason for uh, you know use using this kind of a late init variable right why do we need late init variable Okay, so the late init variable is used 
uh, for uh, defining a variable that can be used in any of the functions that we define inside the class. So this kind of a variable is a common variable to all the different functions that we define here. So this variable is accessible uh, in many of the codes. However, if we uh, define that uh, variable inside a specific function, then only in that function that variable is available. So in here, actually, binding is a variable that can be accessed in any of the code sections. Apart from that, we can see now activity main build binding has been made red. Right? There's an error in here. So how to resolve this? Right? How to resolve this? So you have to you have to import the class called activity main binding. So that suggestion is already given once you click on this. Right? Once you click on this, that suggestion to import the class named activity main binding is given. So once you once you import this, uh, whatever the library that is related to this activity main binding, all the details related to that will be imported into this code. So once you import it, you will see that this error will 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 be gone after some time right so yes so that error goes once you import the correct library related to that uh, that uh, class right so this class has been defined somewhere else in a different file and it it needs to be imported here so after that you will see that there's a red line red color in here which means that we haven't defined something we will get into that later so initially we have defined the variable late init variable called binding uh, in this file so whenever we want to access a certain view in our our uh, in our app right to if you want to access any view in the app you can access that using this variable binding right so uh, inside our on create function right then we are going to uh, call the binding and we are going to call the different views and get uh, the views that we want and do some algorithm development on top of those views so what we want to do now is that we want to access the button right so now assuming that a certain user has given a certain value as tip uh, as the bill value cost of service uh, value in here in the text we now need to calculate the tip value so in order to calculate first we need to get the instance where we click the button in here right so in order to you know like access the the button in there what we do is that we need to call this button right so in order to call this button we need to first do something called layout inflator right and this actually enables us to store all the uh, details regarding the views uh, inside this variable called binding right activity main binding inflate layout inflator it basically uh, allows us to uh, you know uh, store the uh, information related to all the views inside our 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 app to be installed in the variable binding right so so after you do this layout inflator that means it inflates the layout and it shows the different views and also the uh, relationship between the different views uh, uh, views and then store that information in the variable binding so now in binding variable we have all the data related to the views so we want to now uh, right we want to uh, we want to access all the views inside the binding uh, and get them uh, stored as the view 
view information in the binding. So uh, we then have the set content view instruction, which gives the uh, which gives the app the information that uh, you need to access the binding route to obtain the view information about each of the views. Right. After that, you can now you can try to call the calculate button that we have defined. Right. So when you are calling this, right. So if I if I delete this for the moment, right. If I delete this for the moment, I think I will delete the this as well. So whenever we, I mean. Whenever we work with the binding file, now it will have all the different uh, views. It will have the information about all the different uh, views that we have defined in the uh, design files. Right? So, binding, once you type binding and type full stop, you will be able to get all the views that we have defined already in the design. So, if you want to access the calculate button, Right, calculate button can be seen here, and you can see like that. Right now, if I, if you want to go back to the design uh, XML file, you will see that in there, in under the calculate button, what we have defined as the ID is calculate button, calculate underscore button. It's not exactly what we have called in here. I mean, it's not exactly what we have called in here. However, we need to note that binding file has a different has a different naming system it has named uh, uh, the uh, the views in in a certain manner however like those views are named such that the uh, the names are very related to the names that we have already given uh, to those views so after we call that we will be able to access uh, i mean we have to then set on click listener right we have to set the a command on click listener to get uh, the function of clicking the button once we once we uh, call the function set on click listener that means we are calling the function where we are, where, where we are pressing the button uh, so inside that uh, inside that function right we need to define what we need to do after we press the button, right? Whatever the thing that needs to happen after we press the button, we need to define inside the brackets, right? I hope it is okay to you. So inside the brackets, we need to define whatever the function that we are going to define to uh, get the calculate uh, calculated value for the tip amount, right? So when you click the button, the output should give on the tip amount, a tip amount should appear in the text views. So inside here, you need to define the uh, function that will calculate the tip. So that is regarding the calculate tip function and how you can, uh, you know, like, uh, I mean, start defining the function. Right. So up to that point, if you have any questions, can you let me know? Right. So when we go to the our instruction sheet, now we have co covered up to this point. Next, what we need to do is we need to define the calculate function, right? So uh, when we are defining that calculate function, we need to uh, we need to define that function specifically uh, inside. I mean. We can define that function. So outside the on create function, inside the on create function, we have this uh, function defined, 
but you can define that function somewhere outside in here and then that function can be accessed uh, from any other function in the in the file so if you define the uh, the function in here it's totally fine and you can uh, uh, so you can access this function even inside here so whatever the logic that should come inside should come in here okay so I need you to mark the attendance and uh, like try to complete the steps that I have given in the this uh, word file the third and uh, the fourth step right and also uh, sorry third fourth and fifth steps in the meantime please mark your attendance
okay so there are six students here but actually there are only four students in the meeting is it like that but anyway right so so you need to add the fun uh, so function calculate tip to the code so that you can add outside the on create function as a separate function and inside the uh, fun uh, function you need to add your logic right so in order to add uh, like when you are considering whatever the variables you need to add in here you need to consider what you need as input so you need to basically have one input i think mainly which is the value that we input in here as the cost and uh, there are two inputs basically the value that you add in here and the uh, percentage value that we select out of the radio buttons so we need to take those as inputs so we need to take one which is the variable that uh, that correspond to the te text value that you include in here so in order to add that we need to actually understand that whatever we are adding in here will be taken like whatever we are adding to the text view uh, text view will be taken as a string value we need to convert that into a uh, you know double value to a number to a number so we need to convert whatever we come we get as input from here into a uh, into a double value so anyway first you will get a string value so you need to get that value from the uh, whatever the input that you give in here so uh, the value that you get you will store as a string value and then you will be storing that string value we will make that string value equal to the value that we have got out of the uh, the binding I mean out of the view cost of service and out of the text that are that is available there so we will write so we can give any uh, any variable name so string right the cost of service something but I will try to follow the same uh, variable name that I have given in here string in text field right so the string that is available in the text view, uh, I will put in here. So this value I need to obtain, right? This string value I need to obtain from the this edit text view. I need to obtain that edit text view first. So, right, the views can be accessed through the binding, uh, binding uh, object. Right, so an instance of binding will be one of the uh, uh, views that we have given here. So the views out of the views, we want the cost of service. So we need to have the cost of service. Right, so we have access the view. Out of the view, we want to get the parameter text. So that text parameter we take and that will be stored as a string value. After that, we can give another variable which is a cost variable and we can convert this value that we got in here to a double value right we can convert this to a string and then to a double uh, as I remember so sorry directly we can convert to a double right we can convert to a double so since this is uh, a string value string text whatever the variable that we have given in here string in text field and that will account for the text that is available in this view and that uh, the string value will be um, is something that we can convert to a double so an error comes So I need to uh, define this as a uh,
okay so i have also defined this as a variable however in here i need to define this as a well variable uh, mainly because i need to uh, always access the text parameter of this uh, view that will not change contents will change but the type of uh, view that i'm accessing will remain unchanged this one also i have defined as a val well, uh, variable uh, because we want to always do the same function on any of the text that we obtain through the text view so right so the i think uh, I need to find out the possible function that I can put in here. So as of now we have a string value in here. So let's see whether this works. I want to see whether there's an error in here. So in case where this, uh, you know, this whatever the text that we have obtained, do not uh, convert into a string. We need to make sure we convert it to, into a string. So I think there are no errors as of now. There are no errors as of now. Still binding, still running. So I think there are no errors as of now. Only error is this calculate tip function has not been defined. However, it's also getting defined and uh, the final output needs to be uh, obtained. So after this uh, variable definition, we need to define what, whatever the logic that we want to implement. So basically, then you need to obtain uh, the other input data you want in the system, which is uh, the percentage value, the tip calculating percentage value. The tip ca calculating percentage value is also uh, another variable that we need to input. And then for that, we need to access the radio buttons, right? The radio buttons need to be accessed. So the radio button view, we need to access and we we are we can use some uh, spe uh, special function that is available in the Android, which is checked radio button ID, which is a checked radio button ID. So, right? So uh, we can uh, try to implement this as well and get the input data so i will define it again as well and the uh, id i want to obtain to get the necessary radio button uh, input right the radio buttons have been given uh, separate ids in order for me to get the id that is corresponding to the specific radio button selected i will first try to find the id after that i will be able to use the id and then based on the id i can define an algorithm that uh, that will uh, that will uh, decide the percentage value i can de uh, define a while loop or a, uh, i mean if else loop uh, and i can I mean, I can select the percentage values based on the selected ID. So I need to select the uh, the ID that is given in the radio buttons. So first, I need to obtain the binding and then I need to go to the tip options. So why do I need to go to the tip options? So in here, we have defined the radio button, right? We have defined the radio group as tip options. First, we need to access the tip options and after that we can define the whatever the radio button or we can obtain the values that are inside the radio group. So first you need to access the radio tip options, radio the entire radio group. So uh, binding tip options, tip options and then we can select the checked 
radio button ID. So this is some kind of command that is already available in the Android Studio for usage in these kind of instances. So since this is app development software, it has so many uh, inbuilt functions and commands that allow us to get the uh, you know inputs or uh, like outputs from a certain I mean element without without writing it on our own. We can use the default commands for that. So checked radio button can be obtained and this is a default I mean function available in the Android. Then by this we will be basically uh, selecting or we will be defining the selected ID and then based on the selected ID we can choose the percentage value. So up to this point there is no error. So that means I think select ID also has been uh, considered uh, uh, has been taken as input. After that, as I said, we need to uh, implement an uh, if else or we call this switch case algorithm where we define uh, different percentage values for each selected ID. Right. So for each selected ID in here, uh, we need to give different percentage values as the percentage tip percentage. So it can be 20%, 18%, 15%. So the different uh, cases are defined using this when uh, when uh, option. So you can uh, you can consider whatever the variable that you have in here and then get the variable value. The variable value uh, will vary uh, uh, as uh, uh, if the ID is a uh, this uh, twenty percent, then it's the output will be point two, likewise. So the select ID will be basically this uh, out of these variables. These are the variables possible. So the select ID values can be the ID of the option twenty percent, ID value of the option eighteen percent, ID of the value fifteen percent. So there are three options, and those ID values can be accessed through the resource file R. And you can access the ID from the resource, that resource file. So in here you can define that algorithm where you select the uh, value of the uh, ID and inst uh, save it in, in a variable uh, which is tip percentage variable. So we will uh, save that in a tip percentage variable. And then it will be equal to when the whatever the variable that we get is between certain uh, ranges. So the uh, right. So there are different IDs that we have defined. The IDs that we have defined can be accessed through r dot id dot whatever the ID. And then if this is see if this ID is selected then the value of the percentage will be 20% and uh, it should be like 0.2. Uh, so let's see how it has been defined. Yeah, it should be 0.2. The percentage value corresponds to 0.2. And if the ID is uh, so eight, uh, option 18, sorry, 15, or, sorry, first it should be 20% here, I think. This is option 18 percent and then uh, this should be 0.18 and if it is not like that nothing uh, is uh, satisfied then the rest of the uh, possible uh, t percentage will be 0.15 so you can define the algorithm for the t percentage calculation using a when uh, loop or a switch case alg algorithm switch case loop so this is how it has been done so up to this point if there's an error you will, will be able to check that whether there's an error so the calculate tip function should be taken in here however it has not been taken in I believe so some problems are still appearing so so let's I will put it inside the uh, on create function itself and define the function. 
so let's see whether so maybe some uh, problems related to the formatting you need to add some uh, So I will add the calculate function inside curly brackets. So yeah, so it will be created. function should be inside the class so so now I think there are no errors in the code so up to this point we can get all the input data required for our calculation right so the rest of the calculation you can do by multiplying the cost value that we have obtained in here uh, and then the percentage value we have got from here we can multiply those and we can get the final tip amount that tip amount has to be calculated inside here and then displayed in the text view that we have defined as tip amount in the interface so up to that point if you have any questions please let me know
Right, so I will give a small quiz for you to complete. So, hope you are there. So, I will share this. So you have a lecture, I think, right? So anyway, I think I won't do the quiz, therefore. Maybe you can go and resume with the lecture that you have. So thank you for attending today. If you have any questions, you can ask uh, maybe in a little later time. Thank you so much for attending. Right. So you can leave if you don't have any questions. Otherwise, you can ask your questions.